Did you know that in 1984 YouTube paid Simon Martin <coughs> to avoid being accused of copyright infringement? To be fair, this story is not what it seems on the surface. Martin wasn't a musician, and you too didn't steal anything. You see, it all happened because of the undeniable similarities between two photographs. But you'll have to hear the whole story if you want to know more. Summer 1984, there's a meeting between U2, Island Records executives, U2's manager Paul McGuinness and art director Steve Avril. U2 were working on their new album The Unforgettable Fire. The album was shaping up to present the public with another dimension of the band and their music. This meeting was focused on a very important aspect of the new album, the cover. <laughs> because only idiots don't judge albums by their covers, right? A shoddy, unappealing, ill-thought picture means that there's a chance fans won't give your music a chance, especially then, a time when music wasn't freely available anywhere there's internet for free. The cover might misrepresent the kind of music you will find inside, like this extreme example by Throbin Gristle Illustrates. Check out the short in the description if you want to know more about this colossal joke. It is exactly the same with you two thumbnails. You don't click to watch a video whose thumbnail doesn't appeal. Anyway, back to the meeting. The unforgettable fire could be the album that would make you two superstars or destroy their career. A lot of thought had to go towards its cover then, and this meeting made sure that everyone was on the same page when it came to that. By the end of the meeting, Steve Avril was given the job of getting an idea for a suitable piece of art for the cover as soon as possible. Avril had designed all the previous U2 album covers, but this one was different. It had to signal that the band had changed direction, so it had to be different from the previous efforts. No kid knows snapshots of the band. On the other hand, if possible, it had to communicate that this was still U2. It also had to reflect the new sound of the band, ethereal, dreamy, timeless. Gee, and people think hammering out a cover is child's play. The first thing Avril did was conjure an image that would do the trick. He recalled a photography book he had seen. In Ruins, The Once Great Houses of Ireland by Simon Mardson. Why? That picture on the cover was quite evocative. Exactly what was needed. An Irish landscape. Maybe add the band for good measure. And voila! The next step was thinking of the right photographer. You two had come in contact with a Dutch artist, Anton Corbin. BAM! Another problem solved. In July, you two were sent with Corbin in West Ireland to take pictures for the cover. It turned out that the picture that was chosen to grace the cover of The Unforgettable Fire was incredibly similar to that on the cover of In Ruins. People assumed it was Lane Castle, but in fact it was Moidrum Castle. Legend has it that Slain lost quite a few wedding receptions when people thought that was the castle facade. I don't know, I think that would be a funky place to have a wedding party, don't you? Anyhow, to prevent problems with Martin, Island and U2 decided to pay the photographer a discreet amount of money. Perhaps they could have got away with murder, but why risk losing face? With some brilliant graphic design, the cover of the album was completed. Gorgeous, isn't it? The picture shows Moidrum Castle prominently, with two band members slightly out of focus, dwarfed by the construction. I think it does a great job of reflecting the music on the album. And you? 
This media top patters with Simon Mas, your friend with a master degree in music and a nazzing attention for album covers. Drop me a line telling me what you think of this work of art or of this video. Stay tuned for more music related content coming from yours truly on this very channel. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hats on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love!